We've tried an awful lot of crazy stuff on this show. Today, we're trying a drum hack to maybe double the life of your snare side head, unlike anything we've seen before. In a world where people are having their bodies frozen in hopes of someday being able to be reawakened a thousand years from now, what are we to do with drum heads that are getting tired? Can we give them a second life? We're trying something today that we saw on the internet, on that internet, and we pulled it off much to both of our surprise. When you're wearing out a batter head, it's fairly visible most of the time that some kind of damage has happened to it. Less so with resonant heads and particularly snare side heads because there's wires in there, we're not looking at them that much, but when one gets worn out, it's audibly noticeable. We lose sustain, we lose tone, but what if there was a way to get a second life out of that head? The snare side on this drum has been on there for a while. It's been played a lot, or at least you know received impact a lot from above. Let's hear how it sounds in a little bit of context. At this point, to get good response out of it, I have it tuned very tight. I wouldn't say it's like breaking it tight, but it's pretty close. Now, we're gonna take the head off, we're gonna turn it over, and we're gonna put it back on in the hopes that reversing the head will bring it somewhere closer to where we started. Now, for those of you screaming at your monitors that this is a horrible idea, or those of you who have done this before, let me tell you we ran into a bunch of issues when we first considered doing this, and they all showed up when we first tried. Thing number one is, when you flip the drum head over, the orientation of the flesh hoop around the edge is reversed, which means that the actual hoop on the drum is going to be much further away from the lugs, so our screws were just barely long enough to reach the lugs so that we could start to add tension to the head. The second problem that we ran into is that the gaps in the snare side hoop that allow for the strings or straps to pass through when we attach the wires were significantly far away from the head after we'd added tension again because we're lifting it away because of the orientation of the flesh hoop on the head. What this means for us is that unless we tension this, <laughs> this head extremely tight, we can't actually get the hoop tensioned enough onto the drum to where the gaps in the hoop are flush with the head, which allows for the wires to be in contact and do what they do. Bearing in mind that these heads are meant to take a fair amount of tension, but there is a limit, there's a high likelihood that you're going to run into uneven tensioning and the possibility of part of the head pulling out if you manage to tune the thing high enough to use in this manner. Okay, the drum is now fully intact again. We have tensioned up the snare side head as high as is necessary for the wires to contact it. And we haven't changed the tension on the batter head though. Over the course of all this, it may have changed slightly, but not very much. Let's hear how it sounds in this configuration. First things first, yes, it sounds like a drum. It sounds like a very highly tuned drum with an insanely choked snare side head. Things that are indicative of that is the amount of overring that we're hearing, especially in the rim shots. We're also hearing very little sustain in the snare wires and mostly just ring as the sound trails off. Thirdly, 
you can't tell from this at home, hitting the drum feels like hitting a tabletop. It feels really, really hard because of all of that resistance in the snare side head. I didn't change the batter, so you might think that it wouldn't feel any different, but especially with snare drums, the tension on the snare head really, really changes the feel on top. We love running into wild ideas like this and testing them out. If you are enjoying both watching us do this and saving yourself money by not having to do it at home, please follow the link below to the Patreon. It's the best way to help us continue to make these episodes. There's a ton of extra content over there. Follow the link and check it out. There are times when I could imagine wanting an extremely ringy, really crispy sound like this. They are few and far between, and I can achieve this without flipping the snare side head over, so I wouldn't say this is my first stop along trying to get this sound. Additionally, as we were looking at the drum after it was tensioned up, we noticed that if you look into the hoop on the drum just in front of me, I can see that the hoop that the head is attached to, the flesh hoop, is starting to roll, which is something that you occasionally see on calfskin heads that have wooden flesh hoops. This is a sign that that is starting to deform. It's probably gonna let go soon. It is deforming at the point where the flesh hoop is married, because it's one piece and then they uh, fix it on one side. And that to me says that this is not long for this world. Maybe it's gonna get you through the gig, uh, I'm scared to hit the drum really hard. I'm doing it anyway, but yeah, that's all I want to say about that. The important thing to note at this point is that this did not bring us back to the sound, feel, or behavior of a fresh head simply by flipping it over and tensioning it up on the bottom of the drum. The fact of the matter is that the way that snare side heads stretch and get worn out is an extreme loss of tension at the center of the head. If you've taken yours off and ever looked at it when it was worn out and seen that it looks like a bowl, flipping it over is not gonna alleviate that because it's just a single sheet. So you're dealing with the same thing when you flip it over. You're getting a little more room to tension the head if you're looking at the actual hoop itself being past your bearing edge. But at that point, it's really much more practical to just replace the head. The fact of the matter is that this is probably more likely to fail than if we had just left it alone in the first place and wrote out the show or wrote out the practice session or whatever it was with the head as it was in the first place. In a case where the head is actually failing for you, this is what you're gonna see. A separation along the edge, basically at the glue point. Now, when the head is mounted normally, as this one you know, looks right now, you can still have this happen under extreme tension, regardless of the sort of head that you're using. It's more of a structural thing dealing with film. If you flip this over and draw this head against the edge of the inside of the flesh hoop, which it's never meant to do, you're adding another sharp edge into the mix as you're tensioning it up, which is only gonna bring you closer to the likelihood that it's gonna fail under tension. The manner in which heads are glued into the flesh hoop generally creates a little bit of an edge along because of the way that glue actually wicks up just because of physics. There's not really any way around it. So it works just fine when you use it in the correct orientation, but when you flip the head, you're pulling the film against that edge and adding a lot of insult to injury. <laughs> Everything we're running into today dovetails nicely with the issue of a lot of players out there over tensioning their snare heads right out of the gate when they first get it, rather than moving to a medium tension and using that sound and slowly raising the tension over the life of the drum head. If the first thing you do is crank it as tight as it'll go, you're already in that zone where the thing is gonna get stretched out much quicker and you don't have a lot of wiggle room after that to continue to add tension and use that head for the rest of its life. Just one more drop in the bucket of let's experiment with not going tabletop tight out of the gate and see what else there is below that that gets us a good sound, not just for the sound, but also for the life of the head.
If you've been with us for any amount of episodes, you know that we are all about getting the most life out of drum heads and everything else on the drum set. So naturally, we want to promote anything that's going to give us a good result in that regard. This particular situation feels a little riskier than any benefits you might get out of it. It's hard to imagine a situation where I would make this choice. If anything, I would just keep an extra snare side head on hand in case you run into a situation where you need a fresh one and save yourself all the trouble of trying to make this happen, especially if you have to do it on the fly. Mm -hmm. 